Azman Mokhtar is the managing director at one of the top sovereign wealth funds in the world, Malaysia's Kazana National. It's a pleasure to have you on NDTV. Pleasure to be here. I'm going to start with this man, your focus in terms of the global economy at a time where people are uncertain whether a true recovery has taken place. What does a sovereign wealth fund like you think of the global economy? <clears throat> yeah, I think first of all, globally, we are, sit we are sitting or standing here on top of a mountain called Davos, as you know, where the World Economic Forum is. And it's been five, almost six years, depending on how when you start the crisis, right? So really, by now, the global uh, stabilization period of the global crisis should have been done. Unfortunately, it's not been fully done. So therefore, it means a pretty uncertain environment for the financial system. I think there's still a lot of issues, as we know. Uh, economists, there's multi-speed, if you like. The India is going at a different pace than Europe, certainly than US. Southeast Asia is doing quite well. China is slowing down, but still going fast. So, so two, two things there, really. We've not quite stabilized. If you look at the origins of crisis, whether it was the Asian crisis, 98, you must go through this period, go to the root cause of the problems, because only then can you get into the period of regeneration and growth. So we're still, I'm afraid, five, six years standing on this mountain, we're still not quite there yet. What that means, the, the upshot of that is multi-speed world, uh, I think for us and other investors, uh, really trying to place yourself in the right geographies, right sectors. In that sense, our home geography is Southeast Asia, with linkages into India, Middle East, um, and as well as China and North Asia. You know, we are we are better off. But the world as a whole, I think, therefore, one has to be quite selective. We think. Okay, let's talk about your India investments because you've got two primary big ones there: Apollo Hospitals as well as Idea. Idea let's begin with yeah, the Apollo, yes, and uh, we'll talk about the rest yeah. of the cl uh, climate yeah, there. We we started entering India about six, seven years ago, and I'm very happy to report to your viewers. You know, we've been treated well. With you know, there's a lot of issues here and they're normal, uh, but you know, we make good money. Although in Malaysian ringgit terms, a lot of those gains were eroded because the Indian currency. The rupee, rupee, you know, has been relatively depreciated, right? But it's okay because one looks at the fundamental uh, underpinnings of a business. So both healthcare, uh, <coughs> as well as mobile telephony, as we know, has done extremely well. Uh, I think before that, it must serve the customer base, and I think both Idea uh, and uh, as well as Apollo, and uh, the other have done well, and we are also very thankful that we work with very good, competent. You know, partners that we are, you know, we have a very good working relationship with both, both uh, the Birlas as well as the Reddies. Eh? And both companies are now actually rolled into two of our very important regional companies, Arziata and Integrated Healthcare. Okay? They're both very successful and we are, we are very happy that we're participating together with our Indian partners as part of that broader growth again. But you're going to stick with these investments for a long time period. What is your exit strategy? I'm sure you have one in place. We do, but uh, to be honest, for a sovereign fund, it's more important that uh, the returns and the horizon, uh, generally the horizons are longer. So we don't have, for example, a need to, to close out the fund after five years. We don't. As long as it's fundamentally sound. Of course, that's a very active and you have to be very vigilant. You know, constantly you work and you don't take things for granted. As long as it's growing, it's paying dividends, uh, then, you know, we're quite, we don't really think about exit too much, actually, to be honest. In fact, in some cases, like in India, uh, we used to be shareholders of Yes Bank. And uh, Rana is around, and I saw Rana, Rana. He said, you shouldn't have sold out. I said, I wish I could have stayed longer, but we wanted to increase from 5 to 10%. But because of regulatory uh, constraints, we were not allowed to. So while we were happy with the company, 5% was neither a little bit neither here nor there. So we took our profits, but we wish we could have stayed longer. So, so which is also another message, really. I think uh, we appreciate a democracy like India, which is great. I mean, you, you trash out the issues publicly, and there's a lot of public debate. As you know, there's, in Malaysia, a large percentage of our population is of Indian origin. Yes. There's very strong cultural people links. In fact, I, I, I'm brief that the third largest Indian community outside India is in Malaysia. Food, etc. So we, we think we, we understand that cultural aspect. On the other hand, from a business standpoint, as you know, sometimes the pendulum swings too much. There's over-regulation and this is a problem. But the, so we, we appreciate and we respect. As a sovereign fund, of course, we respect each country's uh, you know, step-by-step -step, 
liberalization as well. And we do this too in Malaysia, as you know. No? It's, a, it's a very holistic development model. Right. But, you know, we're bullish on India. Uh, we have an office in Mumbai that's been there, I think, four or five years now. Uh, we intend to actually invest more. Where, where right would sector. you like to invest? And if even regulation wasn't a concern, where would you put your money in? What kind of thing? No, we, we see, we see uh, quite a few sectors, uh, you know, without being too specific, it's a trade secret. No, no, but, but seriously, I think if you look at healthcare, if you look at uh, banking, if you look at uh, mobile telephony, uh, this is a play on the emergence of the middle class consumption. Very clear. You know? So there are other related sectors, whether whether it's retail, we're doing infrastructure, by the way. Uh, we're, we're building roads as a company called Uniquest in partnership with IDFC. Actually, we're also shareholders of IDFC. We've got 9.9%. Right. Uh, Rajiv is here. Rajiv yes, is around. Yes. So we're partners with, uh, and uh, Deepak is the chairman. So we're happy with that. So Malaysia has demonstrated the ability to build uh, infrastructure well, you know, efficiently. And uh, you know we're working with our Indian partners to roll out highways, and uh, you know we can do other things as well. So infra, consumer, certainly these are the kind of sectors actually. Um, and actually we're looking not just one way, Namrata. Uh, we want actually a two-way link. So if Indian companies should actually look at Malaysia and Southeast Asia as their, their base. Eh? I think we're doing a special economic zone called Iskanda. It's on the tip of the southern tip of Malaysia, facing Singapore. Very exciting. We think, of course, you know, as like, uh, for example, BPO or whoever, they can have a mirror site uh, in a place like Malaysia. I think lifestyle, uh, you know, connectivity is not so far away. Right, and, and uh, that's something you're taking away from China as well. You're getting a lot of companies to come in and invest in China, set up the centers, particularly Asia. in hardware yeah. uh, and North, in North, Malaysia. North, North, North Asia, for example. For example, Japan, right. post uh, Fukushima. Right. And uh, even in Thailand, where there's a lot of foreign investors post the flooding, so, so you know, I learned this term. They used to say just in time manufacturing. Now they call it just in case manufacturing. You know? That means you need to diversify your supply base. So Malaysia and other countries like Philippines actually has been receiving a lot, uh, which is great. I think you know, and that's the nature of the world. It's all interconnected now. Okay, one final question. Do you feel India has lost a little bit of edge in this year post what happened uh, in terms of scandals on the telecom side, the corruption allegations? I mean, it's not for me to really comment because I don't, you know, we, we all don't fully understand what's happening in another country. But what, as a foreign what, investor, what, as, as a foreign, foreign investor, investor, what I can say is I am happy that the issues are, are trashed out, are debated. You know, this doesn't happen in all countries. You know, it's good that that basically reflects a very vibrant democracy. Uh, you know, I, as, as I mentioned, we've been long-term investors. We intend to be long-term investors in India. We've made good returns. We've got some issues on the currency, but, you know, that's something we manage. No issue. No, not big issue. So, eventually, I think you, you get there. But did but the tax process, controversy scare you? Uh, not really, actually, to be honest. To be honest, because, because as I said, the, the issues have been trashed out. What foreign investors do worry is, obviously, if the pendulum swings too much. I think we can appreciate, of course. I mean, as I said, we come from a sovereign fund. So the sovereign part of the sovereign fund, I understand completely that, you know, you are doing this for your people and the people in India. I mean, this is totally, if not for who, right? That's very clear. And we go there, we want to invest, make money, but, you know, provide service your, to the customers, be a good corporate citizen and work within the system. Now, the system itself will mature, I'm sure. I am confident that you will get there. You will get there. And that's why we're, we're still around, right? Of course, how we get there, you know, obviously we all want it to be in the most efficient way. But sometimes the pendulum does overcompensate too much, you know, from no regulation to too much regulation. But that's, in a way, natural. And it's not just in India, in many places. Right. Um, but certainly, I would say this is part of the teething, uh, you know, growing pains, if you like. Malaysia goes through this too. You know, every country will go through that. So, you know, the overall sweep of things and history and economic history, I don't think it's a big thing. Uh, but with one caveat, we all need to work on it. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app.
Download now.